digging into the agenda of the day. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining prayer line today. It is well with you. Amen. God bless you. You are welcome to another edition of the prayer line. from Germany it is well with you God bless you my brother or my sister it is well with you we are about to start another edition of the prayer line good morning to you my sister how are you doing today I hope the weather is good this morning it is well amen today we are going to be praying concerning our marriages we always pray uh, every Thursday the first one is for the fruits of the womb for our children. The second one will deal with our dreams. The third one will just pray general prayers and um, especially pray against every form of witchcraft against our well-being. And then the, this is the fourth one which we are going to be dealing with our marriage and um, praying concerning uh, marriages, especially against the strange woman. I had a few cases of strange women interfering in people's marriages and i would like to address that because i know when someone is you know, going through an affliction so many others also is going through the same thing so today by the grace of god we'll be praying concerning the strange woman every strange woman that is affecting our marriage that is stealing away the, the joy the honor of our marriage that still has stolen the heart of our husbands will be destroying their power today in the mighty name of jesus so let's try and share the broadcast invite others let them know that the prayer line is about to start and we'll go straight in into our prayers this morning god bless you father we say thank you we exalt your holy name we worship your majesty we thank you because you are our god our lord our maker our redeemer our savior we thank you for your kindness for your goodness we thank you for your love we thank you because you are a God that never failed. You have never failed us and you will never fail us. We give you all the thanks and the praise. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Jehovah, accept our thanks and our praises in Jesus' name. As we, your children, we have gathered again on this phone to pray, to seek your face. Lord, we ask that the heavens be open unto us in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, O oh God, that the anointing of today will meet every, everyone's need in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, I pray, O oh God, that you show us your mercy. You command deliverances upon our lives. Every way, everywhere that we need deliverance, Lord, command deliverances. Lord, command deliverances. Touch our lives. Touch our health. Touch our children. Touch our marriage. Touch the work of our hand. Touch every area, every aspect of our life, Lord. Father, oh God, I pray that even as our faces are different, so our needs are different. I pray, oh Lord, that you meet everyone at the point of their need. According to your heart desire, oh God, meet them at the point of their need and answer their prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. And I take authority upon this environment. I take authority to the north, south, east and west. I paralyze every foul spirit already paraded to oppose our prayer line tonight and in this afternoon and i pray oh god that every evil arrow of confusion fired against this garden let it backfire back to the sender in sevenfold every demonic word pronounced against our garden together on this media lord we cancel and nullify by the power in the blood of jesus we ask that the heavens above us open unto us let the angels of the lord ascend and descend upon us the lord the words that will go forth out of our mouth according to our prayer will not return back to us void but it will go forth and accomplish that which you please in our lives father let your angels take the request our request up and bring down the answers to our prayers in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen amen and amen i hope you can all hear me i hope everybody can hear me clearly i'm loud and clear enough god bless you i hope so okay 
so today I wanted us to deal with the power of the strange woman in our marriages, especially a lot of us here are uh, women. I know a few men join us, but at least that for us, uh, with addressing us as women, and let's address the issue of the strange woman. I actually want us to pray. Maybe when we first pray, then we'll now talk about, then we'll now um, come back to talk about how also what we too can do concerning this issue of the strange woman. Amen. We're going to take the first prayer point like this. Say, every garment of reproach, every garment of reproach, every garment of reproach upon my life be consumed and be set ablaze by the fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every garment of reproach upon my life catch fire and be roasted to ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. You the garments of reproach assigned against my life. Catch fire and be roasted. Catch fire and be roasted. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. I reject every garment of reproach upon my life. I reject you. I reject you. I reject you. By the power in the blood of Jesus. I reject the garment of reproach in the mighty name of Jesus. Say every spirit of frustration assigned against my marriage your 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 time is up die in the name of jesus you all know that when we say die spirit do not die okay spirit do not die they can only die when the lord comes at the hand and he arrests them and puts them in eternal destruction but when we say die we mean your hand has come your activities in my life i command it to stop that is the strongest word we can use for them. You can say be paralyzed. You can say be arrested. You can say I stop you. You can say a lot of other words. But the strongest word that we want to use against them, against the activities that they are doing in our life is that. So that they will know that we are serious, we mean it, and we are not here to joke at all. That's why we use the word die. Okay? So every spirit of frustration assigned against my marriage die in the name of jesus you the spirit of frustration assigned against my marriage die by fire die in the mighty name of jesus every bondage of marital failure in my life your end has come break and die you the bondage of marital failure upon my life break and die 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 bondage of marital failure i break you off from my life i command you to break and die in the mighty name of jesus break and die in jesus name every handwriting of the wicked against my marriage i wipe you off with the blood of jesus every handwriting of the wicked upon my marriage break and die by the power in the blood of jesus be wiped off by the power in the blood of jesus every handwriting of the wicked written against my marriage i wipe you off i wipe you off i wipe you off with the blood of jesus thou power of the strange woman assigned against my marriage break in the name of jesus you the power of the strange woman over my marriage break and die break now and die in the mighty name of jesus every evil invader Every evil invader aside to infiltrate my marriage, your time is up. Be arrested and be paralyzed in the mighty name of Jesus. You, the satanic invader, assigned against my marriage, against my matrimonial home. I say, Your time is up. Be arrested, be paralyzed, be arrested, be paralyzed, be arrested, be paralyzed, be arrested, and be paralyzed in the mighty name of jesus say every enchantment every incantation every bewitchment programmed against my marriage i command you in the name of jesus for it is written that the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord therefore let every enchantment every incantation every bewitchment programmed against my marriage against my matrimonial bed be dismantled unto the salvation be dismantled be dismantled be dismantled 
be dismantled. Be dismantled now unto desolation in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demonic altar erected to destroy my marriage, catch fire and die. In the name of Jesus, evil altar erected to destroy my marriage, catch fire and die. In the mighty name of Jesus. You may be imagining what is an altar. An altar is any place or anywhere where prayer or evil is being perpetuated. For example, where I'm sitting now is an altar. Okay? And where anyone will also gather to do any evil against me. Whether you put my picture, my name written on a piece of paper somewhere and you are doing anything. Whether it's a table, whether it's your, at your back garden, in your room, in a particular location is an evil altar. Okay? So every demonic altar erected to destroy my marriage be dismantled by the thunder and the fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil altar erected to destroy my marriage be dismantled by the thunder and the fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Say it, every evil altar erected to destroy my marriage be destroyed, be dismantled, be destroyed, be dismantled, be destroyed and be dismantled by the thunder fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. My name, ah, anything representing me, whether it is my name, anything from my body or my picture, my video on any demonic altar that is being used to manipulate my marriage, I command it to catch fire and be roasted to ashes. Anything that is representing me on any demonic altar that is being used to manipulate my marriage, I command it to catch fire and be roasted. 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 And be roasted. In the mighty name of Jesus, every demonic can do, demonic incense, burning against my marriage be back fire back upon the sender i say the demonic candle that is burning against my marriage demonic incense that is burning against me against my marriage i command you to backfire now back to your sender backfire back to the sender backfire back to the sender backfire back to the sender in the mighty name of jesus every arrow of disunity it is written that can two work together except they what we agree therefore every arrow of disunity i hope you're all praying they're all married women that are there whether your marriage is perfect now whether it is yet to be as perfect as you would like it to be you should still pray now every arrow of disunity arrow of disagreement arrow of of disunity fired between me and my husband jump out and back fire back to your sender in seven folds in the name of jesus arrow of disagreement every arrow of disunity fired against me against my husband against my marriage go back to the sender go back to the sender go back to the sender go back to sender in seven folds for it is written you will come against me one way and you will flee before me in seven different ways therefore let the arrow of disunity fired against me against my marriage go back to sender in seven folds i command you to go back go back to your sender in seven folds in the mighty name of jesus arrow of unpardonable error every arrow of unpardonable error fired against my marriage arrow of unpardonable error fired against my marriage you are a liar back fire back to your sender in seven folds in the mighty name of jesus I say, let the arrow of unpardonable error assigned to disgrace my marriage go back to sender. Go back to sender. Go back to sender. Go back to your sender. In the mighty name of Jesus, say, every friend like enemy, enemy like friend, in the garden of my life, be exposed, be disgraced, be exposed, and be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Say, every unfriendly friend, you the friend like enemy, enemy like friend in the garden of my marriage be exposed and be disgraced 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 in the mighty name of jesus say every demonic seed 
that I have sown in the past that is now on an evil assignment against my marriage be aborted in the name of Jesus. Every evil seed that I have sown in the past that may now be standing against my marriage, every demonic seed, evil seed, unfair seed, unrighteous seed that I myself have sown in the past that is crying out against my marriage be aborted by fire. Be aborted, be aborted, be aborted, be aborted, be aborted. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to be aborted. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Say, you, the strange man, on an assignment to destroy my marriage, you're a liar. I bind you, I paralyze you. Every satanic strange man, you, the satanic strong man, assigned to destroy my marriage, I bind you. I paralyze you in the name of Jesus. Every satanic strong man assigned to destroy my marriage, I bind you. I paralyze you. I bind you. I paralyze you. I bind you. I paralyze you. I bind and paralyze you in the mighty name of Jesus. Say every witchcraft hand manipulating my marriage for evil be cut off and be dashed to pieces. Witchcraft hand that is manipulating my marriage. How do they do it? They will come and tell you. The same person will tell you one thing. And that same person will tell your husband another thing. And then you will find that you too, you are no longer in agreement. Because how can two work together except they agree? So what do they do? They will turn your backs at each other. Say every strange and witchcraft and manipulating my marriage. I cut you off with the sword of God. I cut you off. I cut you off. I cut you off. I cut you off. I cut you off in the name of Jesus. Say every demonic wisdom, every demonic wisdom that has worked thus far against my marriage today, I convert you into foolishness. Be converted into foolishness. Every demonic wisdom, the demonic wisdom that has worked thus far against my marriage today, be converted into foolishness. Be converted into foolishness. Be converted into foolishness. Be converted into foolishness. Be converted now into foolishness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say every demonic leg that has walked into my home. Walk out and die. In the name of Jesus. You the demonic leg that has walked into my home. In order to destroy it. I command you in the name of Jesus. Walk out and die. 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 Every evil leg that has walked into my marriage, walk out and die. Walk out and die. I say, walk out now and die in the mighty name of Jesus. You, the strange woman, you, the strange woman, assigned against my matrimonial bed, you are a liar. Die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every satanic strange woman assigned against my matrimonial bed. You are a liar. Be consumed by the fire of God. Be consumed. Be roasted. Be consumed. Be roasted. Be consumed. Be roasted. Be consumed. Be roasted to ashes in the name of Jesus. Every serpent as assigned against my matrimonial bed. I cut off your head with the sword of God. You, the satanic serpent, are signed against my matrimonial bed. I cut off your head with the sword of God. I cut off your head. 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 I cut off your head with the sword of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you, the demonic power. Am I too fast? Am I too fast? It is well. I hope you are following. Okay. I would like to. I will. I will. beat slow down. I will slow down. A bit okay it is well let's take the next prayer point like this say every strange power assigned against my matrimonial bed you know when you have a dream you, are, you you had a dream and then you see that it's not just you and your husband on the bed there's somebody else on the bed with you it's a strange woman that's the power of the strength that's the strength powers that we are praying against say every strange power assigned against my marriage you are a liar die by fire in the name of jesus when you have such a dream the lord is warning you that there is a third party that is intruding into that union 
because the Bible says it is for this reason that a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife and the two becomes one you are supposed to be two on your bed you and your husband but and the next person there should be the Holy Spirit the, the, because a threefold cord the Bible says cannot easily be broken when you bring in the Lord into your marriage he watches over you he protects you provide for you and be the Lord by his, uh, his counsel you live your life but when there is a third personality whether it's physical whether it is or uh, spiritual then there is an intruder therefore that is what that, that is the prayers that, that is where we are directing our prayer the intruder in your marriage the intruder in your marriage their time is up they must give up and die in the mighty name of jesus every strange woman appearing on my bed in my in my revelation i cut off your head and i dash into pieces every satanic strange woman you the satanic power appearing on my matrimonial bed die by fire die by thunder die by fire die by thunder die by the glittering sword of vengeance of the lord i cut off your head and i dash into pieces you the strange woman assigned against my matrimonial bed i cut off your head i cut off your head in the mighty name of jesus every strange woman assigned against my matrimonial bed i cut off your head and i dash into pieces i cut off your head and i dash into pieces in the mighty name of jesus say strange um the witchcraft powers gathering against my marriage your end has come scatter and die in the name of jesus every good thing you see witchcraft is a public enemy once your marriage is good and marriage is good is instituted by god therefore witchcraft gathers against it especially when you both of you you are prayer warriors and you are destroying and pulling down the kingdom of darkness of course they are against your marriage so therefore every witchcraft gathering against my marriage scatter and die in the mighty name of jesus witchcraft gathering against my marriage scatter die scatter die scatter die scatter die scatter die scatter and die in the mighty name of jesus every cause of polygamy over my life break and die in the name of jesus every cause of polygamy you know some of us we are from polygamous home and it is in the history of the family automatically there is a cause of polygamy there is a tendency of polygamy you need to pray concerning it you should pray and deal with it and destroy that evil foundation and say no more i, I cut off myself i'm going to be exceptional from my father's house i'm going to be exceptional from my mother's house therefore every cause of polygamy operating in my life break and die 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 break now and die in the mighty name of jesus say every demonic food programmed to steal away the heart of my husband <laughs> i'm very skeptical i didn't want to call this particular prayer points online but we're praying against the power of the strange woman over our marriage we're going to take it like this every demonic food programmed to steal the heart of my husband i command such food to be pushed out of the system in the mighty name of jesus you know our men you know after the woman has seduced them has been able you know roll her eyes roll her bomb roll her everything and i say oh, oh i made this i made this you don't know where the food is coming from and you go and eat it and from that day when you wake the way the man sleeps he's thinking about the woman as he's waking up is that woman as he's sleeping on the road in the car at or in the office he's constantly thinking about her the, the food was designed to steal his heart we'll see recently on facebook where a woman put something in a bomb and went to sell that is, is is an example of such a thing okay what do we do we command such food that our husband may have eaten our men may have eaten let it be pushed out of their system let the evil food be pushed off be pushed out let by the blood of jesus and the fire of the holy ghost let it begin to purge away every demonic food that our husband may have eaten from the table of the strange woman every demonic food 
every evil food assigned to steal their hearts away from home every demonic food assigned to capture them i command such food that they are eating be pushed be pushed out by the blood of jesus be evacuated by the fire of the holy ghost let the blood of jesus begin to purge their system purge their, their spirit their soul and their body every food that is assigned to steal away is out from you i command it to be set ablaze let the food be pushed out of his body let it be pushed let it be pushed even if that all not happened pray the prayer when the, when you need it the prayer will come forth for you in the mighty name of jesus pray it in the name of jesus every demonic food that is programmed in order to steal the way the heart of my husband away from me from the home i command such food to catch fire let it be consumed by the fire of god let the food even if you are eating it let it be pushed out of the system let the demonic food begin to purge let it be pushed out of the system in the mighty name of jesus every incantation that is made upon his life head every enchantment every divination every spell upon him i command it to be destroyed satanic love portion that is programmed against my husband be dismantled be dismantled be dismantled be dismantled in the mighty name of jesus as i am his legal wife if it is true i'm his legal wife if it is true i'm his legal wife therefore i have some kind of authority over my husband if i pray for him then the lord will answer me therefore let every incantation of the strange woman every enchantment programmed against his life to steal away his heart and to take away his memory every incantation every spell demonic love portion that is programmed against his life upon his life i command it to be dismantled let it be dismantled be dismantled be dismantled be dismantled be dismantled upon his life in the mighty name of jesus i say let the satanic love portion programmed for my husband catch fire in the name of jesus every demonic love portion whether it is in a perfume whether it is in a food whether it is in a cloth whether it is in a shoe whether it is in a gift given to him i command you to catch fire catch fire catch fire catch fire catch fire in the mighty name of jesus and i convert the portion to hatred for the strange woman every demonic love portion that is programmed to steal away the heart of my husband be converted to hatred strong hatred for you in the name of jesus it is meant to be love portion but i convert it to hatred in the name of jesus i convert the love portion even to hatred let the love portion turn round against you and become strong hatred for you that when he sees you by day you will be worse to him than the scripture in the mighty name of jesus i say when he sees you by night the sound of your name the the your, the, your appearance will irritate him more than going to the toilet in the mighty name of jesus any power any way that is programmed and is on an evil agenda to turn the heart of my husband against me i bring the judgment of god upon you i say you the power you the personality on an evil agenda to turn the heart of my husband against me i bring the judgment of god upon you collapse and die collapse and die collapse and die collapse and die in the mighty name of jesus i command you to collapse now and die i say collapse and die collapse and die collapse and die collapse and die collapse now and die in the name of jesus anything that is programmed in that is being used to manipulate my husband let that token of darkness be set ablaze by the fire of god anything that is programmed on evil altar that is being used to manipulate my husband to control his life and his destiny when a man begins to bring his the underwear of his girlfriend home to wash then you know it is not he is no longer in his senses especially african men african men do not even do that for their wives how much more when he is reduced to nothing and a woman is telling him that i i, I don't my washing machine is not working and he takes the underwear of the strange woman that is outside and brings his home to come and wash in his matrimonial home you know that he's no longer in he's now under demonic spell he's no longer himself he's not thinking right he is not himself he has lost himself therefore as the wife stand up and pray for your husband that let every spell of darkness everything that is being used to manipulate him that is being used to control his life be consumed 
by the fire of God. Let it be consumed. Let it be roasted. Let it be consumed. Let it be roasted. Let it be consumed. Let it be roasted. Let it be consumed and be roasted to ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be consumed and be roasted in the name of Jesus. Thou power of manipulation of the strange woman upon the life of my husband, break and die in the name of Jesus. You the power of manipulation of the, of the strange woman upon the life of my husband, I command you in the name of Jesus, break and die. You the power of manipulation of the strange woman upon the life of my husband, your end has come, break and die, break and die, break and die, break and die. Break and die. Thou power of manipulation of the strange woman upon the life of my husband i command you to break break and scatter onto the solution i say break now and scatter break and scatter break and scatter break now and scatter in the mighty name of jesus say any worker of iniquity who are these workers of iniquity satanic priests and prophets satanic prophetess satanic abolists whatever name they have given themselves they are all workers of iniquity if, as long as they are doing things that is opposed to god if god has joined the union to make them one and you now declare that you are a worker of iniquity you can scatter them you and you say you're a prophet or you say you're a priest or whatever name you've given yourself you are a worker of iniquity say every worker of iniquity i had to destroy my marriage your end has come i bring the judgment of god upon you some assault and die in the mighty name of jesus every worker of iniquity that is ayat they come to consult you you to you divine in your altar you say oh the man is rich he has money so therefore you can help him ah, to to change his heart and now he will, he will chase his wife away from home and bring the strange woman home is that right it's not right therefore you the worker of iniquity that is hired by any personality to destroy my marriage i bring the judgment of god upon you today some assault and die upon your evil altar some assault and die some assault and die some assault and die praise sister so that when they take your husband's name your picture or your whatever it is to consult these workers of iniquity and they divine they open their satanic divine divination and they are about to divine their demonic spirit will tell them that ah this one is a praying woman who no, don't touch her she will, they would help you to tell them that ah, you can't touch this one go and look for another man this man is untouchable the wife is praying okay continue to pray my sister that will be your testimony in the mighty name of jesus say every worker of iniquity that is consulted to destroy my marriage i decree in the name of jesus some assault and die 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 in the name of jesus say wherever my name or my husband's name or our picture is taken and our name is called for evil turn that fire of god outside them and destroy them with double destruction you see there is nothing they will do they will uh, they have to call your name one way or the other say anywhere my name or my picture my husband's name my husband's picture is being called and our, uh, our name is being called for evil let the thunder and the fire of god answer them destroy them answer them destroy them answer them destroy them answer and destroy them in the mighty name of jesus and declare and decree that every mother of witchcraft that is assigned that is programmed against my marriage you are a liar die by fire it is written that thou shalt thou shall suffer not a witch to live it is written that upon the face of the head shall dogs eat up their carcass say therefore the mistresses of witchcraft that is programmed that is strong only and all repentantly are programmed against your peace of mind in your marriage i decree in the name of jesus they shall somersault and die 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 in the mighty name of jesus every enemy of my marriage you are a liar die by fire in the mighty name of jesus say every enemy of my marriage you are a liar die by fire die by thunder die 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 in the mighty name of jesus every enemy of my marriage scatter and die in the name of jesus say my marriage is not for sale 
my marriage is not for sale i say my marriage is not for sale every door that i myself open to satanic invader i shut you now in the name of jesus every door into my marriage the door to my home that I, I myself have opened even to strange legs to satanic invaders i close it now with the blood of jesus i close it now with the blood of jesus i close it now with the blood of jesus every arrow of satanic lost you know what i mean by lost when a woman say oh she did you think that they did not know it is it is uh, that's a natural self it's a lie it's not a natural self she did see she purposely planned it she purposely she's purposely doing it she, she put her powder she put she wear sexy dress sexy bra and come and be displaying it where your husband is and and she's making you to believe that uh, she's not doing it on purpose she, she's just being herself it's a lie and your husband too is looking i'm comparing you i say ah, this is my wife and this babe and you too you think that there is nothing going on it's an arrow of lust it's an what arrow of lust they you want the man to be lost in after her and when she has gone you will still be thinking you will still be thinking and it does not matter whether he is your own best friend or whether he is a church member or whether he is sister whatever or evangelist or pastor or prophet or whatever name they are given if they are satanic invaders if they are marriage destroyers marriage breakers stay let them stay clear off of your marriage in the mighty name of jesus therefore declare loud and clear that every arrow of lust fired against my marriage i fire you back to your sender in the mighty name of jesus for example if you are having dreams and in that revelations you are seeing that your husband in the dreams you keep seeing that maybe you are accusing your husband of sleeping with somebody or you saw him sleeping with somebody or uh, you know there is always this jealousy in within you whenever you have such dreams it is an arrow of marital strife there is a potential there it is lurking around you should be aware you should know that there is something up somewhere around and you should be allowed to you should pray about it the lord will reveal it to you the lord will reveal it not again um, in the dream but physically you see it okay okay this is where it's coming from you will see it and you can quickly prevent it we are all women we know how to protect protect our men men they are like you know it's like cats and fish you can't say that uh, you put a fish here and the fish will not feast on the cat and the cat will not feast on the fish once the fish is there there is a possibility that this cat will come near the fish what should you do remove the fish away from the cat don't put a sexy lady around your husband and you now say he's a prayer warrior or he's a pastor or he's an evangelist or he's holy it's not only than jesus he's a human being he's a human being and he's subject to every form of temptations is subject to uh, lust okay so what do you need to do protect your marriage protect your home from such uh, invaders strange women satanic lust that the enemy is programming and unfriendly friends as well you're not so i'm not saying that you should be so domineering and so protective that you can't have friends nobody comes to your house but you as women we can sense it i believe that we can sense it when such things around us you should be able to sense it and you can sense it okay um what i said i was going to talk to us about if, before we continue the prayer if the lord give us the chance to continue in our prayer is that you know i've had quite a number of cases and i keep seeing it also myself and from my own past you know things that i've seen how strange women invade homes you see there are some men that they are they like women everything is kept nothing is kept can pass by them even there are some things that you'll be wondering ah, what is the correlation between this man and this girl how can you go after this person what is beautiful about her what is spectacular about her they are just after their skirts under after their underwear is they do not it doesn't matter to them how they look uh, if they are as beautiful as their wife 
if they are in their class, it doesn't all those things does not matter to them as long as they are women and they can penetrate them. Okay, it is well. The Lord will restore your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. There are some men that are like that. Okay, and there is nothing we can do except he himself pray for himself and say, well, this thing uh, is inherited and I uh, want to. I, I want the Lord to break the power of it over my life and you also walk along with him but the one I really would like to address is those ones that we contribute to as women those ones that we help to, to we help it we hate it for example you bring in an opia into your house how can you bring in an opia into your house and you know that this opia will be attending to your husband for example, you have to work during the day, your husband works during the night and he comes back home in the morning to sleep and you have an opia left in the house. And after the children have gone to school, opia has nothing else he's doing. Even if he has a few things that she's going to do, then your husband will wake up to opia in the house. You are the one that opened the door for the invader. Nobody did it for you. You did it yourself in that case. Because I've heard so many cases like that. And the opia that was nice and were humble, that was saying, yes ma, yes ma, change now. And before Madame says one, opia two is saying 100. And she's beginning to think, ah, what's happening to this girl? What changed? Yes, she too, she's now sharing the same bed with you. That's why, that's what happened. And you gave her the opportunity. You opened the door for her. As women, even if we need help in the house, let the help help in what you want her to do. Okay, limit where how far she can help. Okay, set the help what you want her to do. She can wash the bedroom over the floor, um, go for groceries, buy, bring in some things into the house, give her instructions on what to do. But when it comes to you um, dealing directly with your children, for example, giving your children food or probably some, even having the bath for your children, dressing up your children, let it be you that do that. Don't let it be an opia that will take care of your children because these days we hear of, of a lot of these opia that are lesbians and touching our female children's genitals, harassing them, harassing them and doing all sorts of things for our children. So, you know, if you bring in and help, let, let it be defined, the help you want her to do. Don't just leave it open that she can do everything, including sharing your bed. So, if you want her to cook, clean the kitchen, do this, do this, do this, do this. Let it be clear what you want her to do and let it be that far. Not that she can just do anything at all. Okay? That's one. Number two, then don't let anyone help you to serve your husband. Not If he cannot serve himself, then it must be you serving him. No other person should serve your husband food. No other person, no other person should serve your husband food. Even if you if, if you are not going to be there, prepare his food, cover it and keep it somewhere where he knows also that this is my food, I can get in my house, my wife has prepared my food. Okay? Don't let anybody, and when he's going to be home, let the opia be out. At that time, when your husband alone will be home, you will not be home, the opia should not be home with him. And the children are at school. So opia is home with your own mind, your opia is cleaning the house. No, your opia is helping you to take care of your husband quite wrong okay and as per our friends you see even those that are married I've seen friend that is married with her own husband and yet was I another friend's husband keep your friends out of your marriage that's my advice that's my counsel keep your friends let it be just two of you in the marriage not three of you and don't make a mistake of giving your husband or giving your friend your husband's number. Don't let your friend be able to dial, speed dial your husband. Because you are the one that gave her the number. Whether even, even if it is, even if you are a man or you are a woman, that one is quite wrong. And we have how many hours in a whole day. But this your so-called so friend will not come and visit you when it is only you at home the only time that is available for them to come and visit you is when your husband is home when they will be targeting where your husband will be home that's the only time your friend come and visit you or when your friend come and walk be calling you on the phone he 
settings all traps for you they are all setting traps they are all traps traps keep your marriage away from your friends keep your friends away from your marriage it is a counsel that I give you my sisters and even if you want to help people because it's unfortunate this story that a friend somebody a woman met a woman another woman in their children's school in United Kingdom here not in Africa and she was lamenting and crying that oh things are tough she doesn't have papers she has her own children or a child and um, she does not know how she's going to cope and you were this lady was so moved and decided to help her and said okay and brought the story to her husband at home and said ah this is what i met a lady today this is the story this is it this is it and the husband said oh okay oh, what should we do should we be giving 100 pounds a a month to support her and they were deliberating on our best the man said okay let me talk to her and see what how we can help her and that was it the woman was eliminated now the man is off the house going to stay with this woman rented an apartment for this woman sleeping with her the man will no longer stay in his own home he now sleeping with this woman even their letter of going for IVF, trying to impregnate a woman, is coming home now to meet this other woman to say that this is what your, this is what your husband is doing. Oh, we are trying IVF. We want to get pregnant. The woman that she herself was the one that discovered. That was one that she was trying to help. Who opened the door? It she did. If she has been sensitive, she would have made sure that she keeps her out of her home. She wants to help her, help her and let her stay out. And there are some wicked women out there now. That all they are out to do is to destroy marriages, destroy homes. I've met women that they do not believe in marriage anymore. They don't believe in the sanctity of marriage. They look down upon your marriage. You go and parade your marriage in their presence. They look down on marriage. They don't believe in marriage and they are ready to destroy any marriage that you give them the access into they will tear it into pieces and when they leave your own they will go to the next one again to destroy that is their aim that is their agenda i've seen men i've seen women that do not believe that that hates men with perfect hatred and they are out to destroy their life they are out to destroy their life and but they of course when they are going to destroy they will not tell them that i'm here to destroy you they will come and be sexy and be this and be that and get you once they get you that is it once they get the man that is it their, their aim is to destroy the life of the woman of the man invariably destroying your marriage destroying your home and the man will be thinking that oh you have seen one sweet babe outside that is sleeping with i don't know what is different i don't know what is will be different about them uh, that is different than you that they could not get at home okay that's why also as women we should work on our marriage we shouldn't take advantage of ourselves we shouldn't oh you know think that oh it's my husband you don't need to take care of yourself you can be walking around naked in the house not take care of your bath all day you've not had your bath all day the house is stinking and smelling whether he's a pastor is a pope or a bishop you should still take good care of yourself you should take care of your home no no matter who is seen out there you should be able to say that my wife is yeah She's doing her best. She's also up and doing. Not that you say, ah, oh, this one, oh, I met her from the village. See, see girls now. And he cannot even compare. He cannot even imagine why he married you anymore. A lot of us, we are like that. Now, when the man sees you, cannot remember why he got married to you in the first place. Because now you don't take care of yourself. You think you are married and there is nothing else that you are supposed to do. You should still take care of yourself. You should go to the gym, exercise yourself. Go out and buy nice things for yourself. Take care of yourself. Even though when we do all these things is to enhance us, it's not to make us proud, rude, nasty to our husbands. We still need to submit. We still need to be kind. We still need to be open to their cries. We still need also to support them in, you know, in, their, in their endeavors. You know, men, they appear strong and huge and everything, but they are like babies. When little things is happening to them, they need a place to cry. They need a woman to be able to say, yes, I'm at your back. I'm supporting you. You should be a woman that gives your husband that kind of support. Don't let him be thinking that, ah, when I go and meet this strange woman outside, she takes care of me. 
But my wife, she's always nagging about house rent, nagging about telephone, nagging about this, nagging, 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 nagging. You shouldn't be a nagging wife. You should be a supportive wife. You should be his pillar. Let him know that even when he's looking for a strange woman, let, when he sit down to compare, let him see that, yes, this is, my wife is my wife. You are just cockabine. I'm just using you to whatever. There should be a difference. You, the value should be different. You should be stronger for him. You should stand by him. You should be his support, his pillar. When, he, when there is problem, let him know that, ah, my wife is my wife, even if he's still doing that. But a lot of us, when we even sit down and analyze it, you are dirty. You don't take care of the house. You don't take care of yourself. He is not proud to say that this is my wife, this is my children, this is my home. And you see, you know, these days now, there are so many babes out there, single ladies, that they are working hard every day to steal any man they can steal. And as for our single ladies out there, my brother, my sisters, you are a God, you are a child of God. God created you and he has a plan and a purpose for you. If you don't have your own mind, your own man now, your own man will come. It is not right for you to be behind another man's, another woman's husband. Then you are a thief. You having another man, another woman's husband makes you a thief. It's not yours. You are only stealing it. You are only stealing it. And some women, once they just get one, or some say, hey, I just want you. I've seen a lot. Some people will say, hey, I don't want to get married anymore. Just let him impregnate me. Let's just let him impregnate me. How would you reduce yourself to that? How would you reduce yourself that you just want to get pregnant? Uh -huh. So when you get pregnant, then what's going to happen? Do you think it's a, it's, a, it's a very easy thing to be a single parent? It's not an easy thing. And that is not the purpose. That's not the plan of God. It was never the plan of God that uh, Agai should be impregnated by Abraham. That was not the plan. God would have provided Agai, her own husband. And she would have been the mistress in that household, the, the Lord there, and in control of her own house. Of course, she deserved all the treatment that Sarah gave her because she was a thief, even though, yes, Sarah too had hand in it. But it was all wrong. So, as women, we should be right. And in this day, where now we are having enlightenment about everything, you should be enlightened enough to know that you want your own man, your own man, a man that will be yours. Okay, a man that will, you will call your own, you will stand, you will be able to stand with your head high up and say, This is my man. He may have, have his own past, just like you have, you have your own past as well. It's not a good thing to be a single parent, but if, if circumstances warrant that you come to that point, then you can be, you know, do it strong with the Lord by your side. But it's not a, a good thing for you to be walking towards being a, a single parent. No, that's not the agenda of God for your life. That's not God's agenda. God did not create us and said, okay, this is how I want things to be. That's not how God created you to be. God creates that you will find your own man, the bone of your bone, the flesh of your flesh. How you will work it out is in his hands. And stop thinking for God. And stop thinking, comparing yourself to people. And because you are single, it is not an evil thing. It's not if you should enjoy that period you should enjoy it you should be happy with yourself that well the, at this time the, god is working for me because while you are single and now you are treating yourself is what will make a man see you and say oh, i want to i want to join my life with this woman nobody wants problem now nobody wants add to add problem to their own problem and all men too they are looking for way out that's what they are all doing and so when you are a bundle of problem, who wants to marry a bundle of problems to add to their own problem as well? So you need to be happy, you need to take care of yourself, you need to know that being single is not, is not a, an evil thing. And be hopeful that one day the Lord will bring a man that will stand by you. You see, and as single, before a man says one thing, you quickly say yes. <laughs> it's a mistake. Because that man is not judging you that, oh, uh, you have been waiting for him or uh, this is what you are thinking. He is thinking that you are so cheap. That's what he's thinking on his head. He's thinking that, oh, so this is how another person will come and, and you will just co immediately concur and say, yes, uh, I will go out with you. Uh, yes, okay, let's live together. That's what he thinks. And if, once he thinks that you are cheap, uh, then you, are, you have no value in his sight. Then he does not want to marry you. 
then he does not want to take the relationship further. And a lot of us, a single ones, those are single ladies. I'm talking to you now. Before you you, you find a man is is talking to you, you see when what, one thing I've seen is that when a man respects you, he will not come directly to you like that. He would have find out a little bit about you. He will probably send someone to you to show a sign of respect and say, ah, I like that sister. Uh, who is she? Can I approach her? It, but when he talks to you, when he comes to talk to you, he will talk to you with respect, with dignity, with honor. Okay, and it depends on the way you two you have carried yourself. You see, a lot of single ladies these days, they are going for wedding party, they are going for birthday party, they are going to nightclubs, they are going whatever wherever gathering you are going, hoping that you meet a man there, a man that you meet in such places. And day to day will approach you, you are drinking alcohol, you are drinking and you are dancing, all sorts of dance. You dress in such a way that we can see half of your body. Such a man that approaches you will not see you as a wife material. He's going to see you as babe. Oh, let me just have my own tongue and dash off. And if I can get from her now, because men out there now, they want to get money from your hand as well. They want to use you as much as they can use you. If your house is at, you have a accommodation, let them use slave in your house. If you have car, let them drive your car. If you have money in your pocket, let them take out of your money and also sleep with you. That is their agenda out there. And so now, because you think you are single and you think it's a cost to be single, before one man comes, you run. Before this one comes again, you jump. Because that one comes to a gun, you go and you say you are looking for husband. You are the one that is not looking for husband. You are just looking to have a flint everywhere. That's what you are doing. But if you know that truly you are looking for a husband indeed, then you treat yourself with respect. You treat yourself with dignity, with honor. You carry yourself every point in time. Whether you are coming to church, whether you are going to a birthday party, whether you are going out with your friends, whether you are going to work, you carry yourself in such a dignity that any man that is going to approach you is going to address you in such a way with respect, with honor. And before he, when he's still rapping you and talking all this nonsense, don't even if you like him, even if you like him, even if he's a pastor and he says he, 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 he saw the vision and God, don't say, oh yes, yes, immediately. Don't say that immediately. Still pull some stones. Still say no. Go and talk to my pastor. Or no, I can't. I, I, still do that. Even if you love him. Even if you have been dreaming about him that oh, let this man come and approach me. Okay? Still prove that you are expensive to some extent. Not so cheap and easy. Before you even finish talking, you say yes. And you've given, you've given him your number. He has come to your house. He has spent a night. You are already cooking for him. He's already borrowing money from you. The story is not hard to get. They can cook up any form of story. And this one happened. That one happened. And if I can get this business, you know, it's for the two of us. Has he married you? How are you sure that the money is for the two of you when he has not even married you yet? He's not even married you. You've already started putting money down. You think it is by you putting all those money down, doing all those things that he's going to use to marry you? No. He's, he just knows that, okay, I can use this one. This one is easy. And a lot of them, that's why they keep doing that. They will, they will get the money from you. They will take advantage of you. They will do everything. And the person they want to marry is somewhere. The one they cherish is somewhere there. Is somewhere protected kept away and you see the person that they want to marry one you know simple person but she knows her own value she knows her value and if the man values her more than you you that you're hard working you are holder you are everything you but because of the way you presented yourself so all our women whether we are still single whether you are married you should if you are married protect your home also be a submissive wife don't be a nagging wife don't be a, a tiger wife a tiger wife that when your husband is doing any more any major project any financial project that he's doing you say ah, i don't want my wife to know once she knows the project stops don't let don't don't be such a wife don't be such a wife and even your in-laws still treat them with respect in-laws never like wives this is a it is a it is an established and welcomed and it's not but it's not it's not new so what you need to do is devise a way how you work with your in-laws okay the, uh, my in-law does not like you my, my mother-in-law my father-in-law my sister-in-law my those ones are not news anymore you shouldn't allow that to affect your home all you need as a child of god that is working in wisdom is to know how you deal with them 
know how you how you relate with them and keep them as your in-law your in-laws will always be your in-laws they will never be your friend they can never be your friend they can never see you as their friend they will always see you as in you know as who you are so you too don't let every form of bewitchment in your eyes the scale that is covering your eyes that is not allowing you to see them as they are to you as you are to them fall off your eyes and begin to see them that they are your in-laws and you need to respect them you need to keep them at arm's length and away from your relationship let you your you and your husband be one your disagreement your agreement let it be to be between the two of you don't be bringing in your in-law into your conversation and when he also your husband is dealing with his family respect that and give them their own distance as well all right then and when it comes to your relationship with your husband be supportive be prayerful and be at a lot be sensitive to the holy spirit when the holy spirit is warning you of an, an impending danger that oh see this is what is happening oh see what is coming see what the enemy is planning you too be sensitive to it you need to what be sensitive and when it comes to the issue of sex <laughs> uh, don't let us go into that today when it comes to the issue of the sex between the husband and the wife your sex life it should be between you and your husband no matter how whether it is good or whether it's bad now you are never justified to go out <laughs> let me just put it that way to you whether it is good whether it is right whether it's bad whether it is average whether it is nothing you are not justified in any way to go out of that your marriage to do anything it will not justify you it won't justify you before god it won't justify you before man it will it won't justify you before your children your own children it won't justify you and i have quite a number of testimonies of women that ruined their own life that have actually died by going out of their marriage thinking that they are smart thinking that they too they are some um hot babe that know how to play games and you go and meet some allergy outside there all those allergy all those are like mom they too they are looking for virtues to use to make money don't be a prey don't let them use your virtue to, to 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 make money stay in your matrimonial bed stay there work it out with your husband with prayer with fasting with enlightenment with patience work out your matrimonial bed between you and your husband work it and also also do not uh believe in all these sex toys i do not believe in it i do not believe in it is 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 like masturbation and it it will it will not resolve anything it is not from god it is from the pit of hell i don't believe in sex toys as well but you and your husband with patience with talking talk you know married couples they only talk about electricity bill you know things that makes their faces frown they don't sit down relax talk let your husband sit down put your head on his laps talk just talk and laugh you know things that at ease you shouldn't be tension uh, this work if it's not about work it's about some money bills if it's not about some bills it's not about children if it's not about children it's about your relation uh, your in-laws or relation it's always about things of tension between husband and wife when is it that you you know you just crack jokes and laugh when is it when is it that you ask your husband and say ah let's go upstairs so uh my body is somehow uh, how are you feeling or when is it that your body bruises his own body you know not you know touch him hold him he holds you as well is it always about tension always tensed up tensed up and the only time that you say think or do anything sexual is when all the lights are off everywhere is quiet and you just do it man who 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 the light is still off and you put off the light and let everything look normal as if ah, we, think we are couples that don't do such things so, and we don't even discuss it we don't even talk about it and you want your sex life to be good and you wonder why the man is going out you see all these men they like such things but they will not come down to come and tell you that this is what they want they are they, uh, they, they men are not like that they won't come down to come and tell you and say ah uh, uh, let's talk uh, or let's chat or let's joke that's why you see them and you know men that look so responsible so responsible and you see them outside talking with some young girls and they are talking nastily because that's nasty if you are much older and the girl little girl is saying yes sir yes sir and you're saying ah 
how you see your babe. Oh, let me touch you and you are behaving like that. You are not supposed to be behaving like that with the girl. You are supposed to do that with your wife. You should be with your wife at home. And the wife also should be with the husband. You should come to that level where you, the two of you can hold hands. You are both sitting down in the sitting room. You are watching TV and it's touching you romantically and you are touching him or you're sitting on the sitting room you sit, sat on his laps you can do that yes we have houses but we lost it our home is no longer home but house that just house us you know we are just habiting together and i've had few couples that two years they are living in the same house but they've never talked they don't communicate verbally the, the, their communication is via post-it i'm going out come back by four and the wife too will say okay on the post-it on the fridge they don't sleep in the same room you just make food and keep it there and when the husband too comes get his food and that's it they don't communicate they don't chat they don't what happened where did this start from when where did we start that kind of relationship from you see even if the ones that our parents did we're supposed to learn from them we're not supposed to be worse than them because our parents never did that and these days now before anything happens the woman is quick to say i want a divorce i'm better off single you are not better off single every marriage needs to be worked on every marriage needs to be worked on if your marriage is not perfect then work on it discuss it talk about it go for counseling if you have a dream and you see a shoemaker shop okay if you have a dream and you see in that revelation that you see a shoemaker shop it means the Lord is saying, go for counseling, marriage counseling. You need marriage counseling in your marriage. That's what God is telling you. A lot of us, when God is counseling us, talking to us, guiding us, who wants to help us, we don't have a clue what God is saying. Because our God talks in metaphor. He talks in metaphor. He talks in parables to us. So you need to be able to decode what God is telling you, what God is talking to you about. And when there is an intending a problem in front, God always warns us. Our God is good and gracious and merciful. He doesn't leave us. He says, the Bible says he will not leave his only one to see corruption. He won't leave you to see corruption. But when he's warning you and warning you and warning you and you don't respond, what is he going to do? He's not going to come down in his majesty to say, I'm warning you, my daughter, go out of there. No, he's not going to do that. Okay? We need to be very, very careful with our marriage. Let marriage be how God instituted it. <laughs> our Christianity has not changed. God is cannot be a is not a modernized God. Yes, everything is being modernized now, but God, this God that we call upon, is not a modernized God. It's not a more it can't be a modernized God. We can't modernize God. His values are never changed, it still remains the same. So, my sisters out there, and including all my brothers. Let's go back into our marriage. Have a chalk. You know, and, and I think it's pride. You know, we have so much pride. And I don't think there is any more pride. The Bible says the two of them were naked and they were not ashamed. So between husband and wife, there is no more pride. There is no what? No more pride. You let that pride die. Whatever pride you think you have, let it die. Especially for we are for the women. Let the pride die. Talk to your husband. Tell him how you feel, how, how, what you think you can do to move your marriage forward. You can go out, go out on a date. Say, okay, let's arrange the children how they, they will be. And go out, you and him. Once you go out, set a rule that as we're going on this date, we're not going to talk about bills. We're not going to talk about the children. We're not going to talk about work. We're not going to talk about anything. We're just ourselves, just me and you. Let's talk, hold hands, play do footy wooty behind the under the table in the restaurant that you go to and just laugh laugh and laugh and come back home and see you know from time to time organize dates like that you and your husband just the two of you set rules once your conversation is taking you to hey that bill hey, that house rent hey, just quickly quickly i say oh no 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 so we're not going to talk about this just the two of us oh so how was your work today so how are you doing today ah uh, so how are you feeling and uh, so did you get to climax when we did it the last time so what can i do better talk about it i know it's uncomfortable for us but talk about it talk about it say hey, 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 you were too fast or you were too slow or you did it in this position i don't like this position talk about it with him talk about it with your husband you see i don't know what we're doing to our marriage 
when I hear all the stories, you know, my body is moved, I'm moving, and a lot of times I see people's mistakes, people's mistakes, little, little mistakes, and one of it is pride. As women, there is no more pride. You, are, has, you have accepted to marry him. You have accepted to marry him, and you have said, yes, I do. And you've even had the first child, you've had the second child. So what is, where is the pride again? What is all this pride? You are earning and so what? The two of you has become one. Whatever you are earning, you is earning. Whatever is earning, you are both earning. The two of you are now one. You are one. So yeah, don't let any, don't let pride destroy what is meant to be so beautiful and good and nice and meant to heal the two of you. It's meant to heal you. And I noticed, I, I, I think somebody once told me, I said, uh, we never agree. I, never agree your his own ideas are always a way i mean different from your own yes men's perception of things is different from women's perception but if you want your man to see your perception it's not in you being impatient with him it's not in you in the way you will say it to him so nastily that he will now see your perception you won't see you won't still see it he will maintain his own but one thing it was my husband that did it for me once you know when um, um, all talking he kept quiet and then one day he just said it quietly and when he said it so quietly it, it the message was delivered that's what i'm saying but when we're all talking i'm talking he's talking his own back and we're exchanging the words i can't hear what he's saying i'm maintaining my stand but he allowed you know at that time he didn't even say anything i think it was a very long time ago and he just and, and, what was it? I, I, I what i i think it was even before we got married and he said, you know, he just said it quietly. There was no fight. There was no quarrel. There was no exchange of words. He just said, and it registered. It, the message was delivered. I heard it. It got through to me. And I, I, I didn't even speak back. And it just kept rolling on my head. And I saw that that's a better way of communicating with your spouse. It's a far better way. You know, talk. When he, especially the men, if you have a strong will man, if you are married to a strong will man, if you are married to an adult man that does not, that you know all those men that say woman, woman, listen to him, submit to him, do what he wants. Then when you now, you can go and kneel down beside him and say, my husband, this is it, this is it, this is your husband, isn't it? There is no more pride. So kneel down and say, oh, my husband, this is it, this is it. It will, it will register in his head. It will, there is, it's a human being. It will register in his head. But when he's taking, talking one, you two, you are talking hundred. Before he says this, you are saying that. You continue to disagree. And it's an arrow of disagreement. Alright, my sisters, I pray that the Lord will give us a perfect marriage. Our prayer is that on this prayer line, all of us that are suffering one way or the other, most especially out of our own mistakes also, because you should take some responsibility for whatever it is that went wrong. A lot of times when people are telling me the story, I will pick up, I will always pick up their mistakes. Say, this place, you made a mistake there. This place, you, you, you open up the door there. So take up responsibilities from your, for your own mistakes and work at it. And I know, I, there is something I know, that God <laughs> is a God of vengeance. Remember with the widow that said, oh God, avenge me of my adversaries. The Bible says that. Even though the unjust judge did not at first, and later I said, because of our weakness, just let me do what she wants. How much more God? How much more God? The only thing is that we should not be weary of the Lord. We should consistently stay there and say, God, I need you to do this for me. To restore my marriage, restore my matrimonial bed, do repair my marriage. Yes, I admit that I've been wrong. Yes, I admit that I've done all these things. It was my mistake. Yes, I admit the, all those ones that I did. My, I was not obedient. I was not a supportive wife. I was not a submissive wife. I was this. I was that. Admit your own fault before the Lord. Okay? And the Lord will come here. He will not leave you, in, 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 you know, to be ashamed, to be disgraced. And every uh, garment of reproach that anyone may be, may be wearing at this time, the Lord will wipe it off. He will remove it from you and He will give you, a, He will restore to you a garment of glory, a garment of honor again. In the mighty name of Jesus. I sincerely hope you will be blessed. If you are there and you are suffering from the hand of the strange woman, you know there are so many prayers I didn't pray today because they are so conk. If I mention them, they say, ah, these people, what kind of prayer are they praying against the strange woman? That's why I didn't want to go there. 
So call me or text me. WhatsApp me and say, I, I too am suffering in the hand of a strange woman. And I will send you the prayer point I want you to pray. I will send you also another prayer point you pray in the oil. Now, in this our olive oil. And you can use it to pray. You can use it even to... You use it to pray, use it to cook. And the Lord will destroy the bound, the evil bound of the strange woman over your husband's life. The Lord will break it off. The Lord will disgrace the works of the strange woman in your life, in your marriage. Every evil that has gone wrong, the, everything that has gone wrong, the Lord will repair it and restore your marriage. It will grant you peace in your home. It will restore only again into your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will grant you peace in your marriage. And every inherited cause of polygamy that you may be walking in, I pray that the Lord will break it and destroy it completely in the mighty name of Jesus. For example, if you are married or you are yet to get married, and you know you are from a polygamous home, and polygamy is in your inheritance, and you do not want it in your own marriage, there are prayers we pray. We call it foundational prayers. You destroy evil foundations that those things that have been in the past, your life will defile it. Okay, it doesn't, it's not defiled by words of mouth, it's defiled by strategically dealing with it and saying, No, I have seen this in the pattern. My mother was like that, my brother and sister is like this, my mother's sisters are like this, my father is like this, and I do not want it. By strategically dealing with it, it will not that history, that evil pattern will not repeat itself even in your own life. Okay, so those are the thing, ways that we'll deal with it. It's not just by mouth, it's not just by bragging, it's not by words of mouth alone. You strategically deal with issues. Okay, so if you are dealing with strange women, WhatsApp me and say, I need the prayer of that strange woman. I will send it to you even on WhatsApp. If you are dealing with evil foundation of polygamy, marital failure in your, of your father's house, also there are prayers that you can pray. Okay, if you are just dealing with lateness in your marriage, or if you are already in a relationship with a married woman or married man, I counsel you to go and stop that relationship. Stop the relationship. Stop it and see if the Lord will not honor your faith, your big step of faith that you have done. I've seen so many testimonies, and I've seen that a lot of people, their lives is based on that relationship. I've seen people in this United Kingdom, I've seen people even in Africa. Where their life is based on their their life, their 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 sustenance is based on the relationship with the married man. Is the one paying their house rent? Is the one doing this? Is the one doing that? And so they feel that they cannot, but continue in that relationship is a wrong path. It's a very wrong path. If you want the Lord to come out for you, you stop that relationship. You break off that relationship. You the man may have been financing a big house for you. Stop it. The one that your salary can take, go and rent it. The little that your salary can feed you, be feeding on it. And see if God, this God that we are talking about, is not a man, it's not pastor, it's not your geo, it's not prime minister, it's not the queen. We are talking about the king of glory, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the almighty, the one that's never failed, the, the unchanging changer. The Lord that says, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you, and you will not be ashamed, I will not fail you. And I know that this God never fails. If you wait for him, you will not be ashamed. You will lift up your head. He will change your story. He will give you a new song. So my sisters, it is a counsel. It's there for you to say, is what they are saying true? Is what she's saying real? Can it be possible? Try my God. The God I'm talking about is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His name is Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name is Jehovah, Jehovah Yahweh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Elohim, El, El Shaddai, Jehovah Tiskenu, Jehovah Mekadiska, the one that has never failed. The very first, the last, the beginning and the end. The one that knows that you will be in this situation today. And the one that holds all the key to your problems. Alright? Our God is good, is kind, and I stand in, in, in awe of Him, and He will do it for you. He will do it for you. All right, Father, we say thank you. I bless you, I exalt you, I glorify you. I thank you for all your children. I thank you for their lives. I give you all the praise and all the honor. I cover them all in the blood of Jesus. 
I ask that you continue to keep them, keep their home, keep their marriage. As many of God had a marriage and they are experiencing marital bliss at this time, I ask that your angels will surround them and continue to keep their home and protect their marriage from all harm and from all evil. Any evil arrow that is fired against their home, I command the arrow to go back to sender in seven fruits. Lord, and as many of God are experiencing all forms of strife, reproach in their marriage, every strange leg, the invaders, satanic invaders, the strange woman in their home, I ask, oh God, that you command deliverances upon them in Jesus' name and restore on it back into their marriage. Holy Spirit, I invite you into every home, every life, every marriage here, that you be the true thought call to bind them up together, even as one. I pray, oh God, that you continue to keep them. Lord, let every strange eyes, the demonic leg, and the evil eyes monitoring them for evil receive blindness. Demonic leg, let it walk out and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you restore their home. And every mistress of witchcraft, the mistresses of witchcraft, whatever position they've given themselves, that are working against any boss, anybody's marriage here, let them collapse and die a miserable death in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I cover all marriage and their matrimonial beds in the blood of Jesus. Let their marriage remain on the fog. Those that have been defiled, let it be purified and let it be remain on the fog. Let the fire of God purify their marriages and their matrimonial beds in Jesus' name. Lord, I say thank you. I exalt you. I glorify your holy name. I cover all our children in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I ask that this time that you keep them. Father, we pray, O oh God, for ourselves that as we go out, as we come in, as we eat, as we drink, as we sleep, as we wake up, that your mighty hand of protection, your outstretched hand, will continue to keep us and protect all that is ours. We shall not die. We will not weep over any of our loved ones. We will not die untimely. And I pray that the sun shall not smite anyone by day, neither will the moon by night. But rather, every evil that is programmed into the heavens and the elements against you, I command them to be dismantled unto desolation. Every plot of the terrorist, the evil plot of terror, shall not prevail upon your life, upon the life of your loved ones in Jesus' name. I say you will not take a train that will shed blood. You will not take a plane that will shed blood. You will not go into the shopping mall that is about to shed blood. Every pathway that you are going and you are coming from all your loved ones your husband your children will be taken blood will not be shed there in the name of jesus because i declare that precious is your blood the blood of your loved ones in the sight of the lord therefore your blood shall not be shed by violent and deceitful men in the mighty name of jesus it shall be well with you it shall be well with you and your household and the news we continue to hear of you shall be news of the goodness and the mercy and the faithfulness of the most high in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for me. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining today's prayer line. Don't forget there will be another prayer line in the evening with my husband. And um, the Lord will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Also, thank you. I appreciate all your love and your support. God bless you and have a wonderful day. All right. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Please, can you share the broadcast? Can you share the broadcast? A lot of people call me from YouTube anyway. But let's try and share the broadcast. Can we share it? Share it with your contacts. Let's try and share the, con uh, the broadcast. Help me to share the broadcast. Okay. Help me to share the broadcast. Can you help me to share it? Thank you. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Help me to share the broadcast more with your followers with your contacts thank you god bless you let's try and share it let's spread the news let people know also that they can join in this prayer line though people have been watching on youtube and they've been contacting me and asking me with the time and everything some people can't watch now because they are at work and said they'll watch later but thank you so much for sharing it i appreciate that god bless you the lord will continue to uphold you and strengthen you and grant you your heart desire even according to his will in jesus name thank you so much let's try and share the broadcast okay god bless you thank you have a lovely day bye bye for now yeah can i have some hearts i didn't quite get a lot of hearts from the facebook today i got a lot from uh, periscope but not from pay, fa uh, not from facebook <laughs> let's have some hearts on, on, on facebook thank you 
I'm Bob's, yes, thank you. <laughs> Have a nice day to you too. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.